Here's our vlogging test. This lands right here. has the absolute potential to be the best vlogging lens for YouTubers. 20 to 40, f2.8, the most comparable Sony lens is the G Master 16 to 35, 2.8, retails for 2,200 US dollars. Right now, this Tamron 20 to 40, 2.8, retails for 699. Potential is a funny word though, don't you think? Potential means that it could be but it has some things to prove. That doesn't mean it will be, it means it could be. I've been testing this lens and I wanna share everything I found with you. Here's our vlogging test. Tamron 20 to 40 f2.8. I wanna get you guys a quick difference in just the look at f2.8 to f4. So here's f2.8 Tamron 20 to 40 at 40. There might even be a little bit of difference in the color of the lenses like I think I might look a little more red on this lens. Either way, that can all be fixed. 16 to 35 F4 at F4 at 35 mil, the highest end of this range. I'm vlogging right now because this could be the ultimate vlogging lens. Now, Gerald Undone, I've always wanted to say one thing to Gerald Undone. Gerald Undone, you were wrong. In his review, which I think you should watch by the way if you want all the technical specs, and I have a lot of respect for Gerald, he compared it to a prime lens. You see, a zoom lens and a prime lens are completely different tools. They're different things. If you wanted a prime lens, you would compare a prime lens to a prime lens. In the zoom lens category, it's like comparing a SUV to a car. They're just not the same. They do some of the same things, but they're not the same. Technical specs, I do think Gerald and Dunn is your man. Usability and video for vlogging, I think I'm your guy. I compared this to the Sony 16-35 F4 because that's what I have available. It's the lens, it's been my Huckleberry from day one. It's been my favorite lens. For that reason, it's hard to knock off the throne. For a retail price that's considerably less, this lens probably makes sense for a lot of you. So let's talk about pros, cons, good, the bad, and the ugly. In the pros category, this lens is light. It's small, it's compact, it's not intimidating. So if you wanna carry it around, street photography, everyday carry kind of lens, it's ideal. Having the option to go to f2.8 to get yourself some extra light is a big deal. When the most comparable Sony lens 16 to 35 f4 only gets you at f4. So being able to lower your crank your aperture to 2.8 brings you extra light and extra creamy, I'm at 2.8 right now, extra creamy depth of field, if that's something that you're into. Price point, let's bring that up. So 16 to 35, Sony 16 to 35, 2.8. 2200 US dollars, Sony, 16 to 35 f4 now there's two different kinds of f4s there's the power zoom which is smaller that's 1198 and then the model i have right here which is 998 a thousand dollars now the power zoom is smaller but then you don't have the crankable zoom now i'm an analog kind of person so i like to have control of that zoom ring cons the bad so what do you think about this action right now as I'm vlogging here. Is it too shaky for you? Because potentially that's the biggest downside I see. 
It doesn't have the obstacle stabilization the F4 has, even though it is smaller and more compact, is the footage as usable if this is something you'll be doing? That's something you gotta answer for yourself. Now I've done the comparison, the shot comparison, and I'll insert that here so you get a, a clear comparison of the F4 versus the F2.8. Here's our vlogging test. Tamron 20 to 40 F2.8 against my 16 to 35 F4. Really just checking to see how much shake there is. Now I've looked through that footage and I think it's close. It's hard to tell. I think the 16 to 35 F4 is a little more stable and the shakes are a little less harsh on the side. But depends on what you want. Some people like shaky footage. I know I kind of do, but how shaky is too shaky. Additionally, there's the whole size versus weight thing. Everybody talks about small being cool, but a bigger lens like the 16 to 35 f2.8, which weighs over a pound. Let's compare real quick. This is only 12.9 ounces versus the Sony 16 to 35 2.8 is 24 ounces. So you're saving almost half the weight. But if you go with something heavier, it tends to be slightly more stable. So there's a trade off there. And a lot of it depends, will you be using it for photo or for video? And I mainly wanted to talk about video because video is what I do the most of. So how about now? If we're not walking, we're just talking. How most people really would vlog, I normally wouldn't walk and talk. It would be more like this handheld kind of stuff. What do you think? Stable? I'm at 20 by the way. I wanted to make this video today because this lens is as hyped as I've ever been about any lens. 20 to 40 f2.8 for 699, that really changes the game. Here's kind of my conclusion as to what I've learned thus far. If you're looking for the best lens on a budget, this is that lens. If you're a little more specialized in what you need, I think you gotta dig a little deeper and figure out, is the f4 the right lens for you? Is the f2.8 the right lens for you? How much weight do you wanna carry? What do you need? Do you want 16? Do you want the ability to zoom to 40? But for the price point, being one third the price of Sony's same comparable f2.8 lens, this is a home run for a lot of people. It's a great lens. It's gonna be very usable for most YouTubers. And for that, I think right now, it has to be the best vlog lens for the money. Now it depends on if you wanna spend more money. That's up to you. Thanks for hanging out for this little lens chat. That's a wrap on today. Stay on your grind, subscribe to the channel, leave it a thumbs up, that stuff helps more than you know. I'll catch you back for the next one. Here's our vlogging test. 